Five Year Mission, the podcast, episode 35. This episode of Five Year Mission, the podcast, is brought to you by Fansets, your home for all things pop culture pin related. Head over to fansets.com and see all that they have to offer. And also stay tuned at the end of the episode for a very special offer from us here at Five Year Mission. By now, you figured out that this is the Five Year Mission podcast. Welcome to Five Year Mission, the podcast, the only podcast hosted by the band Five Year Mission. Tonight, it is literally hosted by every single member of Five Year Mission. I'm Fark. I'm joined by Mike, Chris, Noah, and Patrick. And tonight, we are going to be bringing you some new music you may not have heard, and we have we ourselves have just kind of recently discovered or maybe rediscovered during this whole pandemic nonsense, which... Now that all of us are at least a little bit vaccinated, I'm fully vaccinated. Suck it, all other four of you. Hey, uh, hey Andy, I just got my second shot today. Oh, so I nice. am fully, I'm joining the, the fully vaxxed club. I, I get mine on Monday. My second one on Monday. So we were two-fifths fully vaccinated. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I'm sure there's some going to be some songs in this playlist that uh, we have created over on Spotify. We will post that in the show notes when we release this episode and you'll be able to uh, listen to this podcast and then you can listen along on that playlist. There's 30 songs on there. We're going to be covering 15 artists today. Well, 14 artists, actually. Yeah. Uh, you'll you'll see at the end here what happened there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, anyone can access it. It is on my personal Spotify account so you can stalk me personally and see what I'm listening to on a daily basis through my headphones while I'm bored at work. So Andy, you're kicking this off, right? Yes. I'm going to kick this off uh, with a little band from uh, let me hang on. Let me look at my notes, make sure I'm pronouncing where they're from correctly. Is it a uh, Chicago? <laughs> <laughs> I think. Uh, oh, I Chicago. Wonder how you're going with that. Chicago. Okay. That's, I should have known that. Uh, it's a band called Cali Masi from Chicago. They've been around uh, just for a few years now. They just released their new album, Laughs, um, about two weeks ago. And it is a phenomenal album. Uh, the two songs I put on there, Trophy Deer and uh, Guilt Like a Gun, are, were the first two main singles. And there are uh, accompanying videos for those two songs that are just really, really well done. And um, I actually came across these guys actually through my girlfriend, Kelsey. She has been friends with the bass player, Anthony, for years, like a butthole. I had never checked them out. <laughs> and then they started dropping singles for this new album and the single Trophy Deer came out and I was absolutely blown away. And I, I think these guys are a fantastic new addition to my arsenal of things to listen to while I'm doing whatever, cleaning the house, driving in the car, whatever. Well, the way when you said that Kelsey knew them before I knew where they were from now, I was thinking that they were, they sounded, it sounded to me like a local band. And uh, Anthony and the, uh, one of the guitarists, Wes, actually uh, both used to live in, in Indiana and then they moved to Chicago. Yeah. Okay. That, because one of the, I think it was in Guilt Like a Gun, one of the lyrics is, in, it says something about Indiana. Drove through Indiana. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, I, and I, th I thought, oh, okay. That must be, because I know you know a lot of local bands, so I thought that might be. Yeah. But I I really liked Trophy Deer a lot. Um, yeah, me too. I thought it, I don't really know how to describe it, but if it sounded familiar, you know, like, but I couldn't quite place how. Um, but I really liked, uh, there's one point in there where there's like this halftime drum. I think it was the, maybe the chorus. It's like, you know, it's going along and then the drums go halftime and it was cool. It broke it up nicely. Yeah. Um, I don't know if this is a compliment or not, but the the vocal kind of was a little reminiscent of Everclear, I thought. I could uh, see that, a little art. art Alex Sakis. Yeah, yeah. So I thought, huh. I, but I, I really I really liked it. I didn't like guilt like a gun as much, but I did like the part where they had the like the background speaking vocals. Oh, um, yeah. The whole talk you know, the, down in the back. Yeah, I, I I always like when that's done when it's done well. Yeah. Um, you know, like when we did, we have that dual talking vocal on um, Colder in Russia, Russia. You know, and it's like this counter melody. Uh, I just when they, you know, I've heard it done badly, 
<laughs> and so when it's done really well, you can tell that some thought was put into it. So I, I mean, I dug it. I thought it was, um, I thought they were both, both pretty decent, but I really like trophy deer. Yeah, you do. You'd actually really dig the video too. It's animated, and uh, Anthony, the bass player, it was his cool. first like uh, go round at trying trying animation, and it's 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 amazingly well done. Like I was like I was like, ooh, I wonder if I can talk him into <laughs> hours yeah. and hours and making a video for us. Yeah, I I, I enjoyed them as well, uh, Andy. I, I, I like them. I was I I was having a hard time putting my finger on who they actually reminded me of. And, and I couldn't, I couldn't find like, and I don't want to say, I, I didn't want to even like say first instincts. Cause I just, I don't know that, you know, I don't know. I, I hate to, I hate to get that wrong sometimes, but, yeah. but, but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. And, and I, um, I wish I could better pinpoint what it is that it reminds me of. Well, their sound changed up for, for this album. Uh, their last album, uh, what was that one called? Uh, Wind Instrument. Uh, it had a little more of a harder edge to it. It was a little more like indie punk, um, kind of more, more along the lines of like a, like a Sparta almost, if, if you remember those guys. That's like the offshoot of At The Drive-In. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this album, they kind of like, they got real ambitious with the songwriting and kind of like got a little more bombastic with the... Uh, with all the chord progressions and the changes and the actual like ly like lyrics are like deep. I mean, if, if, if you listen to the rest of the album, it's just phenomenally done. Like I was I'd like, like I was like, yeah, I realize I know one of the dudes in the band, but I've, I sent him a message and I was like, dude, I am so proud of you right now. Cause this, <laughs> this, this, this is something I would, I would be obsessive about even if I didn't know you. Yeah. And, and I think that's what it was. It sounded to me, speaking of like at the drive and it was like it reminded me of that sort of era that that sort of period of time when um yeah like you know late 90s early 2000s um kind of kind of that post my uh, i don't know post i know i know exactly you know, what you're talking stuff. about no yeah. yeah yeah i had a very uh strokes vibe from the vocals on i think it was trophy deer but yeah uh, i can see that yeah a little bit and again, I would I, I would highly encourage everybody to go go watch the two videos that they have for these songs too, because they were really well done. And actually, uh, my girlfriend Kelsey is her hands are in uh, the video for for Guilt Like a Gun, and uh, the, there's a pizza box that appears uh, that's called like like Cali Masi Pizza. If you if you call the phone number on there, it's uh, it, it actually goes to the singer's phone. <laughs> 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 which which, you know. which which we found out just by experimentation like what are what that numbers to like hello <laughs> like who's this oh. is, is this is this trophy deer, <laughs> is this <the> trophy deer? <laughs> oh my god i'm your biggest fan <laughs> i'd like to order a pizza <laughs> can, I get, can i get that pizza from the video <laughs> so, so what is, how do you pronounce her name? Ka Kali Masi. Kali Masi. Okay. Yeah. They actually, they actually had to do their, their album release virtually this year too. And it was, uh, we, came to, we, we sat down and watched the stream, but uh, they don't have any shows booked until they're heading over for a, like a European tour, uh, I think in October. And like, that's, that, I think that's all they have booked. So I'm, I'm waiting for them to start booking stateside again here soon. Maybe bring them, bring them through Andy, and we'll play. We'll play with them. Yeah, so that would be great. <laughs> well, Mike, let's move on to your first pick. Okay, what was that White Reaper? That's the one. All right. Uh, discovered White Reaper like maybe a year or so ago. I heard him on the radio actually, and uh, I was on my way home, and I had the radio going, and same old garbage that indianapolis radio stations play yeah <laughs> and then uh that song came on uh which is the uh it's the second song on this playlist oh that um, might be right yeah and uh it, it was just playing and as i pulled up to the house it was only like maybe half done and i was enjoying it so much that i just sat in the car and listened to the rest of it a driveway moment and uh and but they didn't say who it was so i actually oh. had to do some research and figure out who it was because i liked it so much they they had a a music video for that song as well that's a really cool video so uh, I, I highly recommend like going to youtube or whatever and watching that so i checked out the the album and uh, the whole album's pretty good and they've got like a couple other albums as well 
Um, but the, the the current album, the one that has these two songs on it, is uh, I, I think their best. Yeah, and I remember, Mike, it was um, a little while back, I think, when I was trying to shove um, the Beths on you a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, were, we, were talking about, <laughs> we were talking about new music. And, uh, and you, I think we went back to your shop and we watched that video. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I did. I showed yeah. that to you. Yeah. And it, I, I enjoyed it. It, it, it. And then listening to even the other track again, it, I don't know. It has like this, um, vibe, like, um, like a cheap trick vibe. I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. And, you yeah. Know, I hadn't even that's thought a, of that, but you're right. I had that. Yeah. I just, I thought like, actually one of my notes actually says like modern day cheap trick. Yeah. Nice. That's exactly what it felt like. Yeah. yeah I, I didn't consider that. Yeah. I, I really like their use of, uh, of like the dual harmony guitar stuff. Yeah. Um, that's what stood out to me. It's really well done. Yeah. Um, I thought Real Long Time was one of the most solid songs on the playlist. I really That enjoyed it. song is so catchy. I can't, I, I can't, I've been catching myself walking or walking, walk, walking around the halls at work or like just around the house. Just going, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, I, I, I agree. Real Long Time has constantly been stuck in my head. And actually, Mike introduced me to White Reaper months ago i don't remember exactly when it was probably right around the time you you discovered them yeah and so i had listened to the album before but i hadn't listened to it in a while so when you suggested it i thought oh yeah that sounds familiar and then i listened to them and it was it was like listening to them again for the first time which was kind of cool because they sounded familiar but i didn't really remember it that well and so it was, uh, I agree, it's super catchy. I kind of got a, um, they kind of had that throwback feel, kind of like the darkness, you know, where yeah. it's just kind of like uh, songs from a time before, but in a new way. Yeah. Um, yeah. They also, I also kind of get a Dandy Warhols feel a little bit from um, Might Be Right. Yeah, I could see that with the way, with the, way the, the key arrangement is on there. there. Yeah. yeah, I, I, well, I can definitely the, get that. Especially like, might be right has that it has a really good groove you know and dandies mm-hmm. are so good at, at doing that kind of groove thing yeah um, but i i love the guitars too the the do like the harmonized guitars are so cool it's just yeah it's just a fun a real they they make some really fun catchy music and again it just it feels familiar so it's easy to get into what what's funny is now that you mentioned the cheap trick aspect uh, if you like look at the band, they also kind of have, they look like Cheap Trick because they all look <laughs> like they don't belong together. <laughs> yeah. It reminded me of, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the Broken West or Apex Manor, but those are two bands that they reminded me of. Apex Manor I've heard of, yeah. Yeah, I can, I can see the that vocals. too. Yeah, it's like the kind of slightly, slightly nasally, like upper register kind of thing, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, I can see that, yeah. But yeah, Cheap Trick is a, Good classic example. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, Patrick, you were the last one to speak. Let's let's move on to your first pick. Okay. I did not pick new artists, quote unquote. I picked stuff that I've been listening to in quarantine that I uh, had, had sort of had new meaning for me or that I really got super into that I hadn't been as into before. Um, and so my first pick is Slow Dive, a shoegaze band from the 90s. Um, they did break up and reformed a few years ago and released a new album then. Um, but the ones I picked uh, song are from an album called Suvlaki. Um, and Slow Dive is a band, I actually don't know for sure where I first heard of them, but I was into some of that stuff back in the day. And I, Lush was the band at the time that I listened to quite a bit. Oh, yeah. um, and I had a friend who had a dream pop band that I would go see locally a lot. Uh, I think that? he wanted to be Slow Dive, uh, the Sunflower Conspiracy. Oh yeah, I remember that. And, uh, but they wanted to be slow dive. Like if you went and saw them, you could easily tell that that's who they were trying to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, I'd heard a couple of songs at the time, but it didn't fit in with a lot of the other stuff I was listening to. And I always meant to kind of check it, check it out more. And I just didn't get around to it, you know, and get into their discography until uh, last year when I had a lull and I was, and you know, the mood just kind of fit, you know, it's kind of angsty, kind of noisy but ethereal and a little, you know, a little depressed sounding, you know? <laughs> but in a, in a beautiful sort of way. And it's just really unlike anything else that seems to be going on lately in music. Yeah, when I first saw it on the uh, playlist, I, I was like, Oh, I, I know that. How do I know that? I know that. I know that name. I know the band, but I, yeah. I couldn't place how or why I knew them. 
and it was driving me crazy. And so I actually like looked him up to, to, to do some research and I was like, Oh yeah. Cause when I, when I listened, when I listened to the, the songs, I was like, Oh, it sounds like, uh, um, my bloody Valentine and yes. kind of more experimental cure kind of, that's kind of what it yep. reminded me of. And then when I looked him up, it was like, Oh yeah, it's a shoegaze band from, <laughs> from the nineties. <90s. laughs> um, yeah. right? It's interesting you bring up the cure because Robert Smith was a huge fan of dream pop and shoegaze music. And in fact, when they released wish, if you notice on their cover art, they changed the name from the cure to cure because he was trying to emulate um, bands like Curve and uh, uh, with all the like all the short band names of the shoegaze bands that were out at the time. Um, <laughs> my and first... that was the album also where they had three guitar players in The Cure. And so they were layering all these different parts in the same sort of way. Wow. The, the first oh. note I have is Cure-like. That's the first <laughs> thing I thought of. And actually, uh, listening to Machine Gun, I really got some shades of cranberries in there. Um, oh, okay. it, it was, I, the, the whole thing, I mean, it felt very atmospheric, you know, that atmospheric emo kind of, mm-hmm. you know, you, they, they sound really sad, but it's really easy to listen to. Um, yeah. it's not, you know, it's, it's not like something you can just put on and listen to and then just kind of let it, you know, just like drift on or, you know, do whatever you're doing. It, it was, it was pleasant to listen to. <laughs> That's what I like about this kind of music is that you can just put on headphones and listen to all the nuances, or you can just have it on in the background and it just, yeah. just let it wash over you while you're multitasking or whatever. So, yeah. Um, but the songs, the song I really wanted to put on there was um, when the sun hits, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other one I had to go back and forth a bit to decide what I wanted to put on. I, I actually was looking for a song they, they had called sleep, which is just totally beautiful tune, but it's, mainly What's unreleased it's on like youtube and stuff but it was not on spotify so i had to pick oh. something else <laughs> so i picked another song off of uh Suvlaki, which is also you know a food by the way <laughs> yeah well and i noticed when i was doing my research it seemed like the album that followed that one was it called Pig- pygmalia or pygmalion yes, pygmalion yep yeah is supposed to be like their coup de gras like they're just epic album that is supposed to be the greatest album you know ever I, I, at least from what i was reading that was the one and so i was curious why you why you picked ones off i guess the album that came before um uh, well the first album didn't do a whole lot for them that was called uh just for a day i think but suvlaki was the big breakthrough album that had like singles that actually did something in the uk and um, I thought Pygmalion was more of a challenging record. Like maybe it had like critical attention, you know, as yeah. opposed to like more popular attention. Okay. Um, and then they broke up probably right after that was released. So maybe that's why, because they didn't. Yeah, uh, it, has, it has a mystique because they like. Mystique, just, right, because they weren't around anymore. And yeah. then they reformed and uh, I think it was 2014 or 15 and put out a, a, a new album and it's actually really good. And it's just self-titled. Yeah, I read, I read that too, yeah. <laughs> I actually thought that uh, at least I think the first song on on the playlist it reminded me a a bit of some of the early shakeup stuff, hmm. like a, a cu- couple of the songs off of the first shakeups album. I I thought it was very similar. Huh. Well, that's a complete coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> but don't don't play it backwards, or you might really notice some shakeup stuff in there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I thought it had a nice a, a nice amount of droning, but like yes. not not too much. N- nice and melancholy. I, I love I love looking at the the old pictures of them because it was just like, oh, that's that's exactly what my friends looked like in the nineties. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> they're just a bunch of kids, you know. They're like they were, they were so maybe. young, yeah, yeah. I was like, I think I went to high school. I think that's a high school picture of me and my friends. <laughs> Actually, I was uh, I saw a short documentary about them not too long ago, and um, apparently Neil Halstead, the main the main singer songwriter guy, when he was trying to uh, come up with stuff for Suvlaki, they had Brian Eno come in to produce him, and oh, he knew man. that he had worked with. I think it was David Bowie. He said he, he knew he had worked with, and that was it but he didn't really know who Brian Eno was at the time. Oh, wow. <laughs> he said he would have been completely terrified if he had known. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, Chris, you want to move on, move on to your first pick of the night? Yeah, sure. So my first pick is not a brand new discovery, but it's one that, uh, 
I've been a big fan of for a long time, but it's, it's definitely one that I, whenever I mention it, no one ever knows what it is. And I've started to, I've been listening to them a lot lately. Um, the band is called the sun and they are a band out of Columbus, Ohio. And they, uh, they formed around 99 and then they broke up in 2008. They only released one full album. They had a couple EPs. Um, and the EPs were kind of a, l- a lot of songs from the, the album was called blame it on the youth and a lot of just like earlier versions of, of songs from there, but there were some, there were also some other, uh, tracks but um blame it on the youth came out in 2005 and then um i was playing in a band uh we've talked about them before rebuilt at mm-hmm. the time and i discovered i don't remember exactly how i discovered them but um when i when i did it was like they were from ohio so it was like my mission to play with these guys i was like we have to play with these guys <laughs> so um in 2007 which was like you know just about a year before they broke up um, we actually had them come to Indy and we played with them at, uh, <laughs> rock lobster. <laughs> in <Broader Pole. laughs> it was, I was desperate to get a gig and it was like, this was when they could do it. And it was like the only venue I could book. So I was like the hell that let's just go. But it was a, it was a so much fun. It was one of those, you know, you find a band that you really love and then you track them down and get them to come play with you. And that's, it was, it was just a really fun, uh, really fun show. Um, something interesting about this band, they did not release a CD. They released a DVD album and you couldn't, so you couldn't go to, uh, you know, your record store and buy their CD. You had to buy the DVD and on the DVD, you could, uh, you could rip all the songs, um, from the DVD, but then it had all the videos for all, all of the songs on the, on the album too. So that was kind of cool. Yeah. And so they were on, uh, a Warner brothers label. Um, and so that's, that's how they got to, got to do that, I think. And the videos, some of them are like really polished and really well done. And then some of them, you can tell that they like grabbed a camcorder and just, you know, <laughs> recorded, awesome recorded together. the video. Yeah. Um, but the two songs that I picked, the first one is must be you. And it, I mean, these guys were, you know, in their twenties. Um, and so a lot of their songs are about love and lost love and that kind of thing. And must be you is really, um, I mean, that's what it's about. It's about love and, and lost love. And like the, there, there's lyrics towards the end where it's just like, you can tell, just like whatever this love story is, it didn't end well. Um, but the, you know, like the protagonist is just still in love with this person. And it's just a really cool song. Plus it's got a really cool guitar riff, uh, throughout, um, that yeah. I really like. Uh, I, I was and... really surprised at the amount of hard panning in this song, Chris. <laughs> oh Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know how I feel about hard painting, but uh, they didn't ruin it for you. <laughs> they made it work. No, um, this. You know what? I, I discovered this band long before I really, uh, really had, had gotten into that kind of thing. So, um, but I love that. That's a, it's a really good kickoff to the album. And then "Romantic Death" is their best known song, and the reason for that is so the video. There's there's a website called um, Beautiful Agony. And if the kids are up right now, just send them to bed. Oh, no. <laughs> because I knew that sounded familiar. One thing about this band, though, if you're looking for them, as I know well, I played in a band called Yellow Sun, and calling yourself something that is so generic is not a great idea because no, no. one can find you. <laughs> yeah. So if you're looking for the sun, you can't really just Google the sun and expect to come up with these guys. So you have to do, you know, like the sun band, that kind of thing. But also since they're broken up now, there's actually this video and I don't know if it's on YouTube anymore, but it was not on the album. And Chris Burney is the guy who uh, was the lead singer and and wrote the songs. And um, his name is also problematic because there's like a baseball player named Chris Burney and there's like a wrestler named Chris Burney. And one of the guys in Bowling for Soup is named Chris Burney. So trying to find this guy is also impossible. So I can't track down this video for the life of me. So if anybody out there digs these songs and wants to try to find this this video and it has Chris like playing this little uh, keyboard and like he's 
jumping all around this room and stuff. Uh, if you find it, let me know because I'd love to see it again and hear it again because it's a great song. I don't even remember the name of the song. That's the problem. <laughs> so uh, I, one thing I noticed is that the, the two songs are very different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that too. <laughs> I, did that on, I did that on purpose. They actually... The album is is pretty diverse. I, I mean, there's some really interesting diversity in this album. Yeah, um, it must be you. Like the like the in my notes, uh, how how it, how I wanted to describe it because like the mix of the music and the main vocal, uh, I thought sounded like a weird cross between like early '90s Sonic Youth mixed with like a lot of like Joe Strummer's later like solo stuff. Yeah, because it has like the had the, like his his like the the lead lead singer's vocals are very Joe Strummery, and yeah. then like the 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 way the kind of like the guitars are just slightly out of tune. You can hear that, and then like the yeah. just kind of the kind of nice driving drum beat reminded me a lot of Sonic Youth. I, I think it sounds like what happens when Patrick and I get a hold of one of Noah's songs. <laughs> <laughs> you can see that. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> did they did they ever come and play besides that one time? Because I, I remember back in the early days before Five Year Mission, I remember you talking about them um, mm-hmm. and, and, and really being into them. And I, I feel like maybe they came to Locals Only, but I, they, they must not have. I must be no my memories. I, I had, um, after getting, getting them here the one time, I really wanted to get another show with them in a, at a better venue and it just never it never happened and you know like a year later they broke up so noah what do, what do you got for for your first pick uh okay so my first pick is a band called beach bunny and um I, i'm gonna actually start off by saying that all, all three of my picks for this are all female fronted uh, and also all begin with a b <laughs> that I didn't notice, but you're, that's really weird, actually. That's really weird, but you're absolutely right. I, I, I um, was going to point that out, Noah. I was going <laughs> to say, I don't know what your what your aversion is to male-fronted bands. That, uh, that I think start that you're being something else than B. <laughs> or letters other than B. Well, and Beach Bunny has two Bs. It has two Ooh. Bs. Well, I will, I will tell you, because um, w- one of the reasons that I chose three female-fronted bands is because... I have an eight-year-old daughter and, you know, we don't listen to the radio. I listen to my music library on my phone, you know, through Bluetooth whenever we're driving and whenever we're at home, it's, it's that. So, you know, early on, she was interested in hearing girl singers and, and she kind of made some comment like, you don't have a lot of girl bands in your, in your music daddy. And I was like, oh, I sir, yes, I do. Let me look. I've got, (laughs) You know, and I, so I started looking. <laughs> I was like, ah, actually, I don't. Actually, you're you're absolutely right. I don't have enough. You know, I've got some, uh, but I don't. I, I don't have enough. So I, I kind of went on a on a search for. I mean, it was easy to go back to the '80s stuff, all all, all the 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 Go Go's and the Bangles and all the Cindy yeah. Lauper and the fun stuff from the '80s to play for. But I wanted to, you know, find modern music for myself and and kind of for her as well to listen to mm-hmm. listen to together that we that you know we both enjoyed so chris and i had been hanging out um because we're kind of in the same covid bubble because our kids are going to school in the same house basically when we were hanging out we just started listening to you know music recommendations uh these bands kept coming up uh and and whenever they'd come up and it sound he heard something we really liked we'd say, what is that? Who is that? You know? And then I, if I really liked it, I'd write it down, you know, to go check it out later now. So I will say on this beach bunny thing, this is the one that I feel uh, like the most uh, torn on the most divided on um, because it's, it's a little out of my normal uh, comfort zone a little bit. Um, And I'll get to, I'll get to why that is in a minute. (laughs) Um, I'll, I'll put that in my criticisms. I'll, I'll start talking about first why, you know, why I like it and who they are. So Beach Bunny is, is a band from Chicago. Lots of Chicago tonight. Chicago's, uh, apparently, um, and I guess every time it came on, I just, I just really liked the music. I liked her voice. I liked, I liked what I was hearing. Um, really solid musicianship. Um, and, uh, and her voice kind of reminded me of, uh, especially on the song called Promise that's on here, 
um, it's kind of had the same timber as, um, as, uh, bringing the cranberries up again. Um, you know, uh, Dolores from, from the cranberries, um, kind of had that, that tone. So, but I, she's got that kind of voice, a big range and just, just kind of the warbliness of it that, that she can do on that. I, re- I really like that. You know, you know, what's funny though, if you watch their videos, she barely, she's like Mike, she barely opens her mouth. I know. I know. It's funny. It's like, she's, <laughs> it's like, she's ta- It's like, she's talking quietly to somebody, but she does have a really cool range. Huh? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so uh so as i got i got into the album the album the whole the album i i really got into is called honeymoon like every song is an earworm like every song stays with you it's stuck in your head and 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 you're singing along and and um what i found out though is i started listening to it a little closer i was like you know all her songs are they're all about re- like every song is a relationship song. Like there is not one song that is not a relationship song. And I start kind of listening <laughs> a little more closely to the, to the lyrics. And I'm like, she's, as Chris said, she's kind of real on the nose with the lyrics. Like it's very, just, just saying, you know, very plain language. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> yeah. no I, I said that um yesterday when we were talking yesterday but then i listened to honeymoon and then the the ep that prom queen is on and i get you can definitely prom uh, the ep prom queen ep came out first you can definitely hear the evolution like she yes she her writing um uh, shows growth which i actually you know when i was listening to honeymoon there were lyrics that were pretty on the nose, I guess, yeah. but there was, there was also some really good imagery in there that I had, that I hadn't really paid attention, attention to before. And, um, which really went above what I was thinking when I was, you know, talking to you yeah. and saying it was on the nose. So well, I, I, whereas I agree, I agree with you. I think that it, the good transcends what, you know, is a little bit youthful (laughs) i agree i agree and once i started doing the research like i went back and looked and like she she basically was like a bedroom recording artist uh as a very young like when she was like 17 or something like she was just writing songs in her bedroom and putting them out there and then apparently entered a a battle of the bands and didn't have a band and got a band together for this battle of the bands and and they just clicked like the band clicked i don't think they won or anything but the but they they clicked as a band and 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 really like went off from there but then apparently like one of these songs like went viral on tiktok oh, it, oh. you know i don't even have spotify so you know i don't <laughs> not say like that's like a whole nother thing to me um and so as, as I really started getting into this, I realized like when they put out their latest album, she was only like in her early, like she's only like 23 or something. And when she started, she was like 17. So, I mean, I'm a 45 year old, old man. And so some of these emotions and lyrics and things that she's putting out there, it's just, you know, I'm just, it's, it's, I'm sure if I were 18, I would be like, Man, I feel everything she's saying. I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> you know, um, You've matured. I've matured, and I and like Chris said, listening to to some of the because they have like five EPs and only one full album, but like listening to some of the EPs and then going to this full album, um, I do hear the maturity in in the songwriting. But um, I guess I'll just I'll just kind of wrap up with saying the the. Uh, the musicianship, the the music is just super, super good. Like they're all like the drummer's fantastic. Just the, the guitar work is great. It's just said every song is an earworm on there. Um, and, and so it's, it's, it's grown on me. I'm still a little, like I said, I'm still a little torn with the lyrical content, but, um, but it's just a shimmery glittery, like spring into summertime pop album, you know, yeah. that, that um, I'm, I'm, in the headspace right now to kind of enjoy. So these lyrics, these lyrics aren't for you, old man. (laughs) (laughs) And the songs aren't that long. I mean, they're like, they're very short, two two to three minute, you know, pop songs songs. and perfect for Noah. 
Perfect. Just, yeah. yeah, I know. You listen to this album and it's just over before you realize it's over. And you're like, oh man, I got to listen to that again because I want to, you know, I want to, I, I wasn't paying attention the whole time and now I want to, I want to hear it. So it's, it's definitely one, it's, it's definitely the kind of band you want to have the whole album. You just, it's not just a, a, a one, you know, one song that you want to listen to. You want to listen to it all the way through. I actually, this is one of the few new band albums I've been listening to over the past year. And I, actually wish I had thought of putting this on there <laughs> on the list really? I, I had um, no because idea. I really like it a lot and that would have really raised Andy's ire so it's a good thing I did <laughs> <laughs> but I, if I was going to pick another one I would probably pick this this album cool I didn't I didn't know I didn't know you were already you had already heard it and then we're into yeah, it yeah yeah I love I love Beach Bunny Okay. I've only heard the album though. I've not heard these EPs, so I should check those down. There's like literally five of them. Five EPs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The one with Prom Queen is really good. And actually, Prom Queen has a video. I don't know if you've seen it, Noah. Yeah. But my my favorite part of the whole video is it's kind of one of those, it starts out with a story and she's going to the laundromat. But she's out in the in the parking lot and it's it's her and and three guys that are in the band. And these three guys are just like goofing around in the parking lot and it's it's, it's just fun to watch because you can tell they're younger guys and they're totally like just living out this, this dream of playing, you know, they're in this video and they're playing in a band and it's, it's just, you, I don't know. It, it's really cool. Enthusiastic. Like yeah. They're very, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can tell they're playing a character, but they're also just being themselves, you know, yeah. which is, is fun. Like running around Fountain Square for three hours with a yeah. guy in an ape suit chasing us. There you go. <laughs> exactly. We'll never be that young again. <laughs> My notes say deliciously 90s. Sounds like Noah on lead guitar. <laughs> Reminds me a little bit of Rilo Kylie. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. Next. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Moving on. Um, let's see. My next pick is a little band from Sudbury, Ontario, Canada called Tommy and the Commies. Uh, any fans of the, the TV show Letter Kenny uh, might have heard one of the five songs that have been featured on the soundtrack to the show so far. And matter of fact, the two songs that I picked, uh, Devices and Throwaway Love, uh, have both been in episodes of Letter Kenny. Throwaway Love was in a Valentine's Day episode and was used. Mwah. chef's kiss wonderfully uh, <laughs> i saw these guys uh actually on my birthday uh in 20 let's see 2019 yeah so just like a like a like a like five months before before lockdown and uh it was a whole big surprise i was there to see it was goner fest which was just a big garage rock weekend in memphis tennessee for goner records which i love the label a bunch of my favorite bands are on there but uh, my buddy Jim from here in Indy was there and he was like, Let, let's, let's see if I can do his voice. Oh man, you, you, you gotta get inside and see, and see Tommy and the commies, man. They're gonna, they're just gonna blow you away. <laughs> uh, and I was like, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I got, I got inside and, uh, they kicked off the show with the first song devices. And like, just from like the first like minute, I was just like, enthralled like they put on a hell of a live show they're a super tight band uh they also remind me of one of my other fav favorite band the buzzcocks from the from the late and, 70s and andy and, that's uh, exactly that's exactly like the very first thing that came to my mind when i when i listened yeah. and i like somehow I, I knew you had talked about them so i knew they were a more modern band but but even just like the recording quality because i'm mm -hmm. listening like this sounds like it is straight up from 1978 yeah, um, and it reminded me of the Buzzcocks of um, Stiff Little Fingers. Like yep. it was just, it, like just so Six Finger Satellite, perfect in that vein. Yeah, I, I was shocked. It was modern, like like if the class were actually tolerable. <laughs> You shut your whore mouth, Mike. I was literally just, just about to tell Mike to shut his whore mouth. Thank you. Noah. Like exact words. <laughs> but yeah, these guys, it turns out, and then it turns out that before I saw them uh, in Memphis, it turned out they had played here in Indy at the at a State Street Pub. And I had zero clue of, about them before then. Oh, man. So okay. I'm pretty annoyed that I didn't get to see them in that super duper intimate venue, but I did get to see them open up for the mummies in it, Memphis for free. 
So. Do you think that they would be, they're going to be playing like when the world comes back to normal here, do you think they're going to be playing much bigger venues because of like being on Letterkenny or anything like that? Or no, be no. Cause they, because they were, they were actually on, on Letterkenny, like, like right as soon as that album came out. And uh, they, the, the only other release they've done so far is a seven inch, which I got in the mail uh, called, I uh, called hurting for certain it's on slovenly records. Um, that is not available on Spotify, unfortunately. That is really, really good. But uh, yeah, they'll be touring again. They do just mid-sized venues here in the States. Um, they're, they're huge over in Europe, huge in Canada. Uh, they go down, they, they tour all over the world. But yeah, I have, I have a feeling- Let me know be- next time they're, they're in town. I, I, would, I, would not, I would not want to miss that. That would be- oh, trust me, I've, I, I, I keep an eye on all their social media just to see whenever they're planning a next tour. Yeah. Because I mean, they're the whole album is just phenomenal. Yeah, I had a similar experience with White Reaper after I discovered them. I found out they had played at the Hi Fi two months before. No, oh, no kidding. Yeah, uh, right across the street from my store. I was probably sitting here doing nothing, and they were. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know what? I uh, throw away love has just such a cool riff. In there. Oh, that, and then, yeah, and it's um, this is just really good, solid punk, you know. I mean, it's yeah. you listen to one song and you just want to listen to you just want to listen to a whole album. Yeah. It's just uh, it was I I really enjoyed both of the songs. Yeah, they got the they, the the full of the full length album. It's just called Here Come Tommy and the Commies. It's it's available on Spotify, and you can just just. When you go, when you go to the Spotify playlist, you can just click on their name. It'll take you right to their page. And that's the same. That goes for all these bands that are going to be on this Spotify playlist. You want to know more about them? Click on the band on there, go to their page. And then from there, just check out what fans also like up at the top tab and you can discover even more. That's why we're doing this right now. Yay. <laughs> Discovery. Hey. Discovery. That's Isn't there good. a Ooh. Star Trek show called Discovery? There sure is. Look at tie in guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Speak- we should we should probably mention Star Trek at least once. I did. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, it's done. And uh speaking of Thai fighters, uh Mike, why don't you want you go why don't you go with your with your next pick here? Yeah, Mike. Explain yourself. That was a good segue. I'm proud. Uh my next pick is called Galactic Empire. What do they do, Mike? Uh, well, a couple of years ago, <laughs> uh, a couple of years ago, I discovered a band called Mac Sabbath uh, that does Black Sabbath covers, uh, and they make the lyrics about McDonald's. <laughs> and they dress up in full McDonald's yeah. costumes. Yeah, as they well. dress up as the Happy Meal characters. Hamburglar. And uh, it's it, it's it's amazing. It, and and so we we went to see them live in Chicago. Wait, 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 wait. Do they have Mayor McCheese? Yep. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. What about Grimace? Oh. Um, yep. Grimace. Grimace okay. is the bass player. And the Hamburglar. Ham- 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 Hamburglar. Hamburglar is the guitar is player. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, uh, or no, ha- Hamburglar is the drummer, and Mayor McCheese <laughs> is the guitar player. Yeah. Uh, and of course, Ronald McDonald is, uh, you know, o- Ozzy Osbourne. So, Dressed as Ronald McDonald, yeah. Yeah, and the nightmare like, waiting to happen. <laughs> but anyway, is. Uh, th- this isn't even the band that it's on. That's on the list. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Segway. <laughs> uh, but M- Max Sabbath is pretty awesome. Uh, you should check them out also. But uh, we we went to Chicago to see uh, them play at uh, the Subterranean, and mm. the band that played with them is called Galactic Empire, and uh, I really had no idea what to expect. Uh, I was blown away because not only i mean if you listen to the playlist you can hear like how good they are uh but they play these songs dressed in full star wars costumes like the 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 main guitar player and like the lead guy is dressed as darth vader nice and the drummer is Boba Fett and there's like a you know, stormtrooper and, you know, another character, like they're just in these full costumes of masks and everything. And they still played these songs as good as they sound on the album. It was fantastic. Uh, so yeah, what they do is they basically, they, they play the, the John Williams score from star Wars, but it's like, it's like as if Metallica were to play it as an instrumental, it's just really good. And this is this is not meant to be a slight, 
I loved the old uh, Disco Miko Star oh, yeah. Wars album. Yeah. And this was yeah. like a total like hard rock version of that for me. I yeah. thought it was great. Updated, Updated for, for this generation. The, they, also, right. <laughs> they also have the Cantina song on the album. Nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think I remember when you came back from that show, um, you because you, you, you went on and on about both bands mm -hmm. uh, for a while. So I, I, I'm, I'm not surprised that that's, that's on, on the list there. I almost yeah, put Max Sabbath on the list, but. and I think I think you showed me <laughs> you showed me videos of it, and it was pretty it was pretty pretty darn impressive. Yeah, this was an interesting pick, um, definitely different than most of the other stuff we have. But I, you know, it's kind of goofy fun, but it's really well done. Oh, they're tight, so tight. Yeah, super tight. And to play and to play in in those like. In the armor, like in the armor, <laughs> the uniforms have got to be so hard too. Yeah, and yeah. and and the thing is, they were they were that good, like live. It sounded yeah. as good as the album does. You should it, like if, if you go to YouTube, there's plenty of videos on there of them playing live. I mean, you should check it out. Yeah, pretty pretty, pretty much any time that you could you can mix Star Wars with Judd Judd, I'll I'll I'll, I'll probably listen to it. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm talking about. No. Judd Judd Judd. Judd. Um, <laughs> I thought you meant like the the Ewok sound, like jump jump, like oh jub, no no no, sound the well, Ewok like is jump. Well, well, I guess I, I guess instead of the jud jud, you can just call it you just call it the nub nub. Yeah, the nub Didn't George Lucas remove the nub nub from Return of the Jedi though? He did the bastard. Wow. Yeah, it's it's yub nub, yub nub, yeah, yub nub, and it's not there. Well, depending on what version you have. Yeah, but I'd say you know if, if you're not a fan of of the Star Wars score or if you're not a fan of of instrumental metal, skip these two tracks. <laughs> <laughs> you can actually okay then well then you can actually skip skip those two tracks of mics and we can move on to Patrick's next pick. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so her real name name is uh, Mariah Pereira, and then she had a producer by the went by the name of Titanic Sinclair. And they came up with this whole um, sort of performance art mythology. And I'm, I always love bands and artists that have like mythologies about themselves, like the residents or man or astro man or the proto men who we played with. Um, and so Poppy would do these um, really bizarre YouTube videos where it was just like Very. ambient tones in the background. And she would just be saying random things over and over again. And these things went viral. And it was one of those things, like it was kind of, uncomfortable to watch but also you wanted to know <laughs> what the point of it was and so you wanted to watch more of it <laughs> so, where's this going exactly <laughs> um yeah but so i and then i noticed that she had some music out and the first album was called copy computer and the the story behind it is that she's like an android yeah. and she and she's basically satirizing internet culture and modern modern society and she does interviews as the robot, like she's always in, in character. character. Yeah. And so that's what I thought was really interesting about it. Um, and the first album was called Poppy Computer. It came out around 2017. Um, and it's just straight up bubblegum synth pop, the entire thing. And I'm ashamed to say almost that I just, I played that album to death because it was so damn catchy. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I didn't put any tracks from that one on here for you guys because I figured you'd be bleeding from yours for sure. <laughs> so instead I went to the second album, which was a little more mixed, but it, I, in my defense is the only place, uh, sorry, it's the best place where you'll ever hear a track that sounds like a combination of Screamo and Pet Sounds era, Brian Wilson. Yeah, that was a weird <laughs> one. Yeah. I was like, I, 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 it, 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 like, I think in my notes, I said, I said, it reminds me of a mix between like weird mid career beach boys and baby metal. <laughs> yes. I was like, oh, what the what? <laughs> uh, the other thing about it is that they kind of base their whole project idea on the Japanese pop idol scene. Yeah. And I've always been a big fan of Japanese cultural stuff. And so that was the other thing that kind of drew me in. And they, they, there is a song that has a lot of Japanese lyrics in it as well. It was <laughs> unexpected. I did, it, it was, you know, it, it has a real darkness to it, but then there are these moments of really sappy, sweet, yeah, uh, you know, lyrics and, and sections surrounded by some <laughs> pretty heavy <laughs> stuff. So uh, it was, yeah, it was very unusual. Um, 
but it was also interesting to to listen to one of the one of the songs the transitions were a little confounding but and i think that was x um, i can't remember exactly x, yeah um x. concrete was a little bit more cohesive i thought mm-hmm. and it it shifted from that you know kind of sappy sweet to the to the heavier metal stuff a little bit uh it was a little bit less jarring um but i remember i was i was actually driving to mike's store and i was listening to this and i listened to x for the first time i'm like what is going on here <laughs> and it was like shift whoa what is that wait wait what is this so yeah it was um you're like spotify is skipping interesting around interesting discovery stuff. yeah i know <laughs> it's 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 one of those where it, it almost defies genre because it's not really it doesn't really settle in one place. It just kind of, mm-hmm. it doesn't really know exactly what it is. And it just kind of moves from, from one thought to the next. And then just kind of, but it just it, it somehow works. I don't know. It was interesting. Well, that's another thing I like, I like about Poppy is that, you know, I always like artists that aren't afraid to like change, even if it's like a really abrupt or st- like, like it's synth pop, total straight up synth pop on the first album. And now the newest album is like screamo metal, you know, like I, I think that's brave for an artist to do that. Even if, you know, whether you personally like it as much or not, you know what I mean? I yeah. think it's a brave thing for people. To, and apparently she's been nominated for a Grammy, which I just found out about. I saw <laughs> <So>. that. <laughs> I, I thought it sounded like if garbage came out 20 years later, kind of reminded me like a little bit of, of like a few parts of the songs had, had like that garbage sound, but like, but like modern, you know, like. Yeah. Oh, it had garbage sound, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm kidding. I joke to be thrown in there. Speaking of throwing things in, hey Chris, do you have do, do you have a band for us that's also a palindrome? <laughs> <laughs> I do. Oh. In fact. I do. In fact, uh, so this one has been around for a while. They they're actually they formed in 2007, and they are called Taco Cat. And I, but I just discovered them recently, uh, as you know, Noah was talking about, we've been listening to these Amazon music suggestions and, and this is one of the ones that, that kept playing. I think the first one, the first song that I heard was, um, uh, Dana Catherine Scully, (laughs) which if you are an X-Files fan, you know exactly who that is. Um, she's one of the main characters from X-Files and I would, when X-Files was on, I watched it religiously and I've watched it over again. And I, I just loved the X-Files. So Dana Catherine Scully is the kickoff track of their album called Lost Time. Emily Noakes, who is the lead singer, she just is like a huge X-Files fan. And she just kind of, that that whole album is kind of based off of that, that idea. And Lost Time is from an episode of X-Files. And so, um, you know, you get, you get your nerd fix there. Um, mm. But one thing I really like that... Uh, made me want to put Dana Catherine Scully on the playlist is just because it kind of, it relates really well to what we do as five-year mission, Mm -hmm. you know, writing songs about uh, a nerdy quote unquote property. And that's exactly what, what that is, but it's also a really good song. Um, They're a really solid band. Uh, I'd like to point out that um, their bass player, Bree, she plays bass with a pick. Um, (laughs) Like we do, <laughs> which is sometimes frowned frowned upon by um, air quotes real yeah. bass players. <laughs> Although I've talked to um, bands that I've seen, whenever I see somebody in a band playing with a pick uh, on bass, I always t- I'm like, hey, you know, people just give us hell about playing with a pick, and they're like, no, no, it doesn't. You, you play what works. You do what sounds good. And I'm like, all right, good. Um, so. Uh, I, I like something about their lyrics. They have a lot of kind of tongue in cheek lyrics. All their songs are, have, well, the ones that I've listened to have very feminist themes. Um, they play with that though. And they have kind of this tongue, uh, tongue in cheek um, flavor to a lot of the songs, but they're also really smart lyrics, which is fun to listen to. So then the other, the other uh, track that I picked was from their latest album called this mess is a place, which right there. You, you see kind of the play on words and their name is taco cat. So <laughs> that gives you any indication of kind of their sensibility. Um, but hol- hologram is off of this place is a, or this mess is a place. 
And it's basically about how things just aren't the way they seem. And just a really solid, fun band. It's fun. It's another one where you can just list, you know, pop in the the CD or, you know, the playlist or whatever, and just listen through just re- really good stuff and fun and, and, po- and kind of, you know, that in, indie, indie pop feel uh, with a little bit of edge to it. So it's, it's good stuff. I've been a, been a fan of these guys for quite a while. The song that always got stuck in my head was called Crimson Wave. And yeah. it's a, it's a really fun song, but it's also kind of gross. <laughs> if you listen to it's, the lyrics. It's totally, but, uh, it's exactly what you think it's about. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But, uh, but I like their kind of deadpan lyrics. And uh, also, I don't know if you knew this, they did the theme song for the newest version of the Powerpuff Girls. Yep. Yeah, I've really, I've really been enjoying listening to them as well. Um, they, they might have, they might have made the list um, for me as well. But, um, but uh, we can't all have the same bands on here as much as we want. <laughs> no, and I can't have all three of the same bands. <laughs> no, we can't. Yeah, I was going to, I was going to say, Taco Cat reminds me of um, uh, kind of like a less caffeine fueled like version of like of like the the old like '90s Riot Girl stuff. Yeah, yeah, I, I feel like they are definitely influenced by that, especially lyrically, and then like a lot of like mm-hmm. the there's not like a ton of nuance to like the changes or anything like that but it's it's just pretty like it's straightforward just rich and i think it's really it's just really well done i think it's a nice nod to the whole like 90s like like riot girl era my notes say deliciously 90s sounds like <laughs> noah on lead guitar <laughs> reminds me a little bit of rilo kiley lots of songs about suicide <laughs> Speaking, speaking of Noah, um, uh, uh, hey Noah, what's what's your next pick that begins with B? Female fronted. My next female fronted band that begins with a B is called <laughs> Bully, and I I am so excited that I found this band. Like they are what I want, what I have wanted <laughs> in modern music for a long time. I wanted them to sound like they came from the early nineties. Um, but that, that's yeah. funny because my note says immediately sounds, <laughs> no, 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 listen, no, listen, no, listen. My, 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 my notes say immediately sounds like Eisenhower field day. <laughs> well, I want to, I want to sidetrack on that a, a bit because what makes me so excited about them is that when, when Eisenhower field day, when my band came on the scene, I was influenced by all these, Super Chunk and all these like early nineties um, underground bands. And so I, I felt like that's what I was bringing. And, and at the time in like 2006, like, no, I don't, there not a lot of bands were doing that. And, and yeah. I, feel, I feel like instead of people going, Oh, wow, they're, they're doing something that nobody's doing. That's kind of cool. I think they were kind of like, what are they doing and why are they doing this? It's like, that's not, like nobody wants to hear that. Um, but you know, there were, there was a few bands that we wound up with get, get shows with that, that were like in that same vein. And, and it was, it, but it just seemed like far and few between it seemed like everybody was just trying to cram as many band members with auxiliary instruments on a stage as they could. And it was a lot of folk yeah. electronica and just whatever was happening at that time. Like we did not fit with, with that. And, and I, no. I, I wondered for a while, like that stuff, that stuff's never going to come back. Like, like it's gone. It's like, it's, it's, or it's going to be, you know, a long time, but here I am, or, you know, now finding this stuff again. And I'm, I'm very happy that young people are creating this sound and, and, you know, for a while there, there was probably plenty of stuff that I overlooked because I was like, you know, somebody said, Oh, you like them. It sounds like this and this. And I'd be like, yeah, but I already got this and this. Why do I need to hear? <laughs> you know, that's, you know, really, that was my mindset, but, but um, Noah's got a, Noah's got a whole grandpa vibe throughout. I, I've always, you I've been, I've, that? <laughs> Same for you, old man. I've had a grandpa vibe since I was about 17. <laughs> um, I'm, I, I've moved beyond that. I mean, I, I, I got tired of that. I wanted to seek out new stuff and it's just really invigorated my, my, uh, it makes me want to write songs. It makes me want to play music more, just like hearing this and, and bully just does everything that I, I want it to do. Like they just have all this like guitar strangling. That's just like the pixies and archers of loaf. And then they'll throw in 
some really lo-fi sound and stuff like the second track. I think it's called reason yeah. that I put on there. It sounds like, it sounds exactly like this old band from the early nineties called small factory, which probably no one's ever heard. Uh, of. No, I remember them. I remember. It sounds, sounds like them. And she's just uh, the, and then, then, then um, it'll launch into stuff that sounds like Veruca salt and, and whole, even though I wasn't super into either one of those, but they, it kind of brings a little bit of a grunge vibe, but not too much, just enough yeah. to feel the power, but not enough to like, yeah, like, uh, Oh brother. Um, <laughs> and uh, the, um, the lead singer, her name is uh, Alicia. Yes. Bacano, right. Yeah. Yep. And um, she's just got this like slacker sassiness that that reminds me of uh, a lot of Juliana Hatfield. Oh uh, yeah. And uh, but then she can just rip into screaming, she just can like belt it out, deep screaming, yeah. belting it out, and I just <laughs> love it. I just absolutely. <laughs> love it so the album that i've been listening to is called feels like and it's their first album that they put out uh, in 2015 uh, they think they're from they're from nashville tennessee yeah um and then I, I also as i was first listening to them i i also kind of was wondering though i, I kind of have this thing like if if the lead singer is that doesn't play a, an instrument it bugs me a little bit not all the time because i love <laughs> rem like rem I, I love them i love them i love them and michael stipe doesn't do that he's an instrument of, and to himself and i get that and i love that but there's just these times where I, it, it bugs me a little bit if they're not if they're not playing an instrument so i was a little afraid when i looked him up that like she was just gonna maybe be like a pretty face who could scream in, in a microphone and that was it <laughs> and then i looked him up and man she's just like jumping up and down ripping on her guitar and and it just is great it was just everything that i've i've wanted wanted in music in a while so and i think they have three albums this was their first one i sampled through the other two albums and just like everything i heard was fantastic so i imagine i will be purchasing those soon yeah I've listened got, to their most recent album, uh, Sugar Egg, mm -hmm. all the way through. And it's just a really good rock sensibility, but they're not, you know, some songs kind of overstay their welcome. I yeah. mean, they're just, they're just really simple, um, straightforward songs that just are just rocking, you know, and, and they go from one to the next. And she, she goes from this like screaming to, to just like melodic. And it's just really, um, it's just really good. And, and I really like sugar egg. I haven't listened to all of feels like yet, and, but um, it's, I, I, again, it's one of those uh, it's one of those bands that produces albums instead of songs, you know, yeah. and it's, it's really, it's, I, I, I always look for that kind of thing when I'm looking for new music. And I wanted to comment on the, on the lyrics as well. Um, since I commented on the, the, the last band's lyrics, um, she, she has a way of, she's putting out very straightforward lyrics, but in a way that just sounds honest and raw and cool and not trite, you know, like what, what she saw. I mean, she, and it's, it's, she's just putting herself out there, even like, like the, you know, a lot of what she sings about is just a lot of ugly self doubt and stuff, but not like relationship and love just, you know, just about life and insecurities about yourself. But, puts it out there in a, in a, in a very uh, uh, raw and honest way that, that, that I, I, I enjoy that I think is really good. Yeah. I got, I got two, 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 two very quick things about bully. Uh, when Kelsey saw them in Phoenix, she was standing by the bar and these three old ladies came walking in and uh, they, there was like bleachers towards the, towards the back of the room. And uh, Kelsey decided to be, 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 be the nice, be the nice girl at the show and help these three ladies up there. And she started conversation with them. She was like, she was like, Oh, what, what, what brings you here tonight? And, uh, and the lady says, Oh, my granddaughter's playing tonight. <laughs> <laughs> turns, it turns out it's, it's Alicia's grandma and her two, her two church friends that came to see her, her granddaughter play in a little band. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. So that's yeah, great that's great. So, so, so that's who Kelsey went up sitting with a tissy bully. <laughs> wow. but then I was also going to say that their sound, I think I have it pretty much nailed. It sounds like if Jay Maskus from Dinosaur Jr. joined Sleater Kenny. 
Yeah, that is, that's probably a pretty good, that's pretty good combo. Yep. I liked it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of a good combo, we're getting, we're getting to my last pick here. This was kind of my wild card. Uh, band is called Skayfish. It looks like it's ska fish, and it's not a ska band, but it's pronounced Skayfish. So, Are you sure it's not ska fish? No, <laughs> it is Skayfish. Jim, Jim, Jim Skayfish is the founder of the band. And he is one wild-looking dude. <laughs> So I chose the song Sink or Swim and uh, Disgracing the Family Name. And they are two wonderful standout tracks by Skatefish. Uh, they were formed again in Chicago, 1976. And uh, they were uh, their first big show that they played. They were nearly attacked by the crowd opening for Sha Na Na. That's right. I read that. <laughs> <laughs> but then the, later on in their career, they went on to tour the U.S. with uh, with Iggy Pop and then also the Stranglers. And then they did a European tour in 1979 after their second album came out with, dig this, The Police, XTC, uh, the English and the English Beat. Wow, weird. Well, it's because they were they were on IRS Records, That's which right. was founded yeah. by Stuart Copeland. Yeah. So I first heard these guys when uh, Kelsey and I were driving around but halfway during the pandemic and we decided to brave the grocery store for the first time and we were heading back. We just turned it on and heard all these weird bloops and bleeps and some dude singing in almost like a fast, fast paced robot voice. And I was like, what is this magic that we have stumbled across? And so we had to keep on listening and it turned out he was doing some big, long interview with Jim Skafish, who still apparently records under the name Skafish, but his last album was an, an album full of jazz Christmas songs. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And, the, and the, the, the guitarist went on to be, uh, he is an IT guy at an elementary school. Uh, the one other singer, Barbie, she actually died of cancer a few years ago. And uh, the drummer is now a Chicago policeman. One of them is uh, like a, is a professor at Purdue. Like somebody yes. connected with him is like a professor at Purdue. I forget who it was. Yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, uh, it was one of their drummers. One of their drummers, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, these, the Skafish is just weird and like right along those lines that I love of just like, D, what, 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 I, what I like to call Devo core, where it's just like on the cusp of just being like way ahead of its time, especially for like 1976, which is just weird to hear stuff that's like, wow, that's that was not the thing that was going on at that point in time. Yeah. But then also like, you know, it's just innovative and weird. And I, I just, I love that stuff. I'm, I'm actually surprised that it's from that era. I didn't realize it was that old. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. Yeah, I didn't had no idea it was vintage. I, my my comment on it was that it sounded like white music era XTC, and now I know why. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. You, you say innovative and weird. I said discordant and weird, but I didn't mean that in a bad way. Oh was, no, they're definitely that that as well. Yeah, it was interesting and cool. Um, I disgracing the family name. Um, I liked better than sink or swim, but I thought it had uh, some cool keys key work in there mm. um, but also had a real, real it had a good groove which i, I liked yeah they're like they're, they're like a weird combo of like frank zappa and devo i definitely heard devo in there um but like devo on like a, a bunch of weird drugs a bunch of weird shrooms <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I thought the the intro to sink or swim was hard to get through but uh, yeah. Oh, that weird. The uh, yeah, also so it was, was the rest of the song. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I'm gonna I'm gonna drop you in the water like a baby. So, Mike, well, embracing the family name is a great song. <laughs> what you need to do though, Mike, is you need to look up a look up a picture of this guy from from like oh. he's bizarre, bizarre, yeah. like uh, like really cool. I mean, it's like really uh, like the the photographs that they took of him like for promo shots and for uh, oh, man. album covers and stuff like they're very artistic but he's, he's such a weird looking dude well another great thing was like when when, when he was opening for sha na na one of the the other reasons the audience wanted to attack him is because slowly throughout the show he stripped down to a gold lame one-piece women's bathing suit and started <laughs> smearing smearing lipstick on himself yep <laughs> <laughs> Like, like people, people were like throwing bottles and approaching the stage and just pointing and yelling at him. And he just, they just kept on playing. Yep. Oh man. That's really, that's him on the album cover, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. I thought that 
I thought that was some kind of, you know, retouched vintage photo or something. Because oh, no. <laughs> like, it's that's so, him. it's so weird. Mm-hmm. You know, it looks like something you'd see in, you know, that they dig up. A, a uh, 1920s some... German silent. Yeah. Film. Yeah. It's so, <laughs> so interesting. Very pointy <laughs> and angular in that weird dark bowl cut. Yeah. 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 <laughs> strange. Well, I had a Chicago band and I knew that Mike would wind up having some connection to Chicago and some connection to the smoking Pope somehow on here. And this worked out (laughs) perfectly. And I knew it, Mike, what's your pick? Uh, My last pick is Tom Daly. And uh, you are correct on both counts. I discovered Tom Daly actually uh, about 20 years ago, went to uh, normal Illinois and saw uh, the smoking Pope's, at a basement show. And um, this was actually after they had broken up and they were calling themselves Duval. Yeah. And, and it was, it was the same band with a different bass player. Um, and so uh, we went to see Duval and uh, Tom Daly actually opened for them. And it was just him playing guitar and singing. He didn't have a, a, a band with him. Uh, I think he had one other guy come up and play guitar with him on a couple songs. But the I really liked the songs. Like it was really organic and uh, just inter- interesting lyrics and subject matter. And um, and then the, so I bought the I bought his album, uh, the one that both of the songs on the playlist are from. And I listened to it and I really liked it. I thought it was like, you know, kind of like a, a, a lo-fi gym. I mean, you, you could just tell that they just like recorded it in like a living room or something. Yeah. Um, but it's just, this is really a really good, just fun uh, album to listen to. And uh, the, the two songs I picked are, there's some other songs I like probably as much as those, but I thought they were good examples. I definitely uh, thought Smoking Popes um for when i first heard it but looking forward to you is a is a great song but when i heard i have a vampire my I, that, that's the one i heard first and i immediately thought did mike do a solo project i swear <laughs> it voice sounds just like you on that track <laughs> actually what, uh, uh, what's funny about tom daly is uh, uh whenever i hear noah's demos when he sends us demos for like when we're working on a new album they always sound like tom daly songs Oh, yeah, because uh, because my, my my notes actually say deliciously '90s sounds like Noah on guitar. <laughs> 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 and Mike, you've you've played him for me before and told me that you said yeah, yeah. you told me and and I think you even let me borrow some an album for something, but I haven't I haven't heard it since ages ago when when you when you played it for me or I borrowed an album. So I had ex- I mean exactly exactly the thoughts Patrick had when I first listened to it. I thought, did Mike somehow sneak his own song? <laughs> <laughs> his voice is exactly like Mike's like exactly like Mike's a little, well, I think it sounds like Mike, if Mike had like a, like a two pack a day habit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mike was telling me about this and he told me that just what he just said, that it sounded like a demo from Noah. And then Noah said that he listened to it and told me it sounded like a demo from Mike. <laughs> then I listened to it and my note the is love that story. it sounds like Mike and Noah had a baby and it grew up and made a demo. So I think <laughs> somewhere in there is what it sounds like. But, and that's, that's for, I have a vampire looking forward to you. Um, I thought it was really cool. Lo-fi earnest, you know, has that demo like feel. It also has some interesting sound effects in there, which was, it, it's not exactly what you said, Mike. Like it was recorded in somebody's living room. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which, which most likely it was because I, because I believe Tom Daly also did a thing like. Um, uh, there's been a new uh, trend in the last few years of people doing like living room tours, and like, yeah. uh, I, like he's uh, he's actually gone around and like actually done living room tours, like por- I, like porch concerts, basically. I looked up, uh, and when I went to look him up, I I. Um, I didn't put Tom Daly band or Tom Daly music. And apparently there's a, maybe in a, like an Olympic swimmer or something yes. named Tom Daly. Cause I just got like, <laughs> nothing but speedos, just like, like <laughs> speedos, speedos, speedos is when I look like, oh. 
even when you even when you try to spell his name correctly, Google will switch it to the yes, other guy. That's exactly. I was like, I must be spelling it wrong, and I changed it. Like, nope, it's the swimmer again. <laughs> Still swimming. Still sw- <laughs> Speaking of swimming, let's swim on forward to Patrick's final pick. <laughs> I'm going to go back to this early in the uh, program. Chris mentioned the darkness and he said the time before, but in a new way. And I think that yeah. definitely applies to dragon force. Very uh, much so. <laughs> um, so the other, besides dream pop shoegaze stuff, the other main rabbit hole I've, I've gone down during quarantine has been power metal from the eighties. I'm a huge iron maiden fan. I oh, actually yes. finally got to see them a couple of years ago here, but uh, I didn't want to, obviously I couldn't put them on the list. So I picked a, a more up-to-date band that has a more modern sound. And so Dragon Force is basically a power metal, 80s, Iron Maiden sort of sound, except more uplifting and about three times as fast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, their solos are just crazy. All the harmonies, the fantasy-themed lyrics are silly, I know. Um, <laughs> but then they add this retro video game influence sound to it, which really, mm. I think, makes it into its own thing. And I just, I'd, I had never really, I'd heard a couple of tracks at some point from these guys, but just in passing, you know, and I, I it had it in my mind again that I wanted to go back and see what that was about because it was really bizarre, but entertaining. And so I, I checked out a couple of their albums and also the Killer Elite Best Of. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the first track I have on the list was um, uh, Through the Fire and Flames, which is their best known song. And then Cry Thunder, which is a little bit more of a um, oh, man. mid-tempo tune, but it has a yeah. lot, lots of great harmonies in it, guitar harmonies. Cry Thunder is very catchy. I found myself crying thunder quite often after listening to that. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it has, plus it has a lot of cool. Both of the songs have a lot of cool harmonic uh, guitar work. Yeah, those um, guys can shred. Jeez. Yeah, they really can. Um, when I it, it it's it's got. Kind of this cheesy power to it, but it's oh yeah, it's fun. Um, both of the songs very much uh, have that video game influence that was really obvious. I almost mm-hmm. thought that maybe they either they had written a video game soundtrack and these were the movies or the the songs from the soundtrack, <laughs> or or even like an anime because um, I know oh, how, yeah. how much you like anime. So I, I thought that yeah. maybe that you know that may. Have, been where it came from but it sounds like that, that's that was cool. another part of the appeal was just the yeah it definitely yeah. sounds like an anime theme a lot of the time uh, but they actually were included on the guitar hero 3 legends of rock that's <laughs> where i initially remembered them that from. would be impossible okay. <laughs> i i was I, I thought um through the fire and the flames or through the fire and flames at about minute four it started to lose me. And then by, <laughs> seven, by minute seven, I was done. Um, it was a little too much. It's a lot of notes. It, it was, it, it's a long song. I was, I was folding laundry at the time. I'm like, I'm going to fold this whole basket of laundry before this damn song is done. <laughs> um, it's it's and, an epic. Uh, it, it is an epic, but cry thunder. Um, it's, it's some, I mean, it's fun. That It, it is a fun, fun song. Yeah, I say I, I said that like the the Dragon Force reminds me if like you took like the soundtrack for like the Bill and Ted movies and gave it speed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Apparently, some of their stuff is sped up, especially through the fire and flames. Like they they play Man. live, but they can't quite pull that off live because it's Whew. just too damn yeah. fast. <laughs> it's super fast. They're gonna have some tired fingers after after a concert. But yeah. to me, it's it's like what Les Paul was doing like way back in the day where he did these little sped up guitar instrumentals, you know, it's like the yeah. same thing, but with the drums and all the guitars and everything doing it, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So uh, I was listening to to the playlist today when I was getting ready to go to work and uh, the first Dragon Force song came on and Ashley popped her head around the corner and she's like, is this Dragon Force? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. So she told me the story about how uh, she used to pl- she used to play the the guitar hero game with her friends and they they would play the song that's <laughs> awesome i knew you picked a good one <laughs> <laughs> we got a chris and a noah left and somehow we're going to combine these two and they both chose the beths so yeah, tell us tell us all about the beths you you two no i'm going to gush here for a minute 
and then you can talk. All right. Because save save, save some for me, man. Don't, don't uh, okay, I'll all. try. So um <laughs> this 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 was another band that came from uh the 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 we'll call them listening parties. Is that is that cool? <laughs> uh and this was before I really discovered any new music. I was just kind of listening to, to the, you know, the algorithmic playlist that, that Amazon had come up for, uh, for me. And um, the bets kept reoccurring and they would come up and, and it was just like, oh, these guys, th this is a pretty cool band. I like these songs. And it was kind of a very passive thing until... I, I, I sat down and I just listened to the first album. It, it's called Future Me Hates Me. And I was so in love with this band. Just like the more I listen to this album, the more I just love this band. Um, they're a band out of Auckland, New Zealand, and they've been around since uh, 2015. So uh, a, lo a lot shorter time than some of the other bands that we've discussed. Um, they only have the two albums, uh, Future Me Hates Me and Jump Rope Gazers, which just came out in July of 2020. Or uh, yeah, 2020. Um, they were uh, uh, they just they have these amazing vocal harmonies. They are just lyrically very interesting. Um, the subject matter is very much uh, so. So Liz Stokes is their lead singer, and she writes the songs and she is um kind of uh, socially awkward i guess would be a good way to put it and it really comes out in the lyrics uh I, the the two songs that i i chose and Noah and i um the, the beths have have these kind of rocking songs and they also have these more uh mid-tempo introspective songs and I, I picked two of the rocking songs and noah picked a couple of the more introspectives we wanted to kind of split it up that way but um, the first one I chose was Happy Unhappy. And I love this song because it's another thing about their songs are they're so relatable. And this song is basically about having a crush. And it's like this all consuming thing that you want to get out of, but you just can't. And it just like takes up all this space in your brain. One of the lyrics talks about how, uh, you know, this crush is, and they never say crush. They never, it's not, not explicit. It's just something that's inferred by, by the lyrics, but they talk about <clears throat> taking up space, you know, instead of, you know, in, in your brain where you're supposed to be, you know, taking out the trash and, and doing other things that you need to be thinking about, but you can't because this crush is just like all consuming, but it's also this really cool, just power pop um, confection. I, it's, it's just really good. And then um, it was also that was that song "Happy Unhappy" was uh, 2018 Rolling Stone Song of the Summer, which I didn't know. I just found that out when I was looking uh, looking up some some interesting information about the band. Um, and then "Dying to Believe" is the lead track off of um, Jump Rope Gazers, and this one is like the guitar what really drew me into this song at first was the guitar in the, in the, um, in, in the verses. It's just like the timing on the guitar. It's just, it's just so cool. And I sat down and I was like, how do they do this? And just like played around with it. Just, it's one of those things where as a guitar player, you just want to know how to do it. Um, not that it's all that complicated, but it's just really, it really stands out. And then um, <laughs> the great thing about this song is it's, it's basically about uh, you're in a conversation that, in fact, Liz, um, she, there's a quote that I found from her. She says, sometimes you have a conversation so much. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> oh, sometimes you hate a conversation so much. It makes you hate yourself. It's like this conversation that you can't get out of and you don't, you're non-confrontational. You don't want to like, uh, extract yourself from this situation and so you just stay in it and it's just like <laughs> it's just such a cool concept but again it's not explicit it's one of those things that you just kind of infer from listen by listening to it and they're just i love this band so much i you know i bought their t-shirt and again they're from new zealand so i had to pay you know overseas shipping i got both the albums on vinyl um <laughs> you know have the the albums queued up on on amazon and i just 
I, I just can't say enough about, about them. I just love them so much. But no, you, you better take some yeah. words. I, I love them so much. I bought the t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Chris and I both got into the best at about the same time and just couldn't stop talking about them to each other. And like, we, we did a lot of listening to the albums on our own um, without, I think, even knowing that we were really getting into them on our own. And then we'd come back and start talking about it. And then we'd be talking about specific songs, you know, track six. And like, we knew this, you know, we knew everything. Um, and, and Chris is like, look what I got on vinyl. And I was like, look what I got on vinyl. Like we, had both, <laughs> like we were both on our separate journeys, but doing the same exact thing. Um, and then when we're getting together and realizing that we, you know, we just loved it, but yeah, they they kind of, uh, are the inspiration for me finally getting off my butt and seeking out new music because I was just so, I just fell in love with this band and, and with her voice and her songwriting and her cute little New Zealand accent that comes out in, in every <laughs> once in a while. And, and when she's singing, um, and they've got this, these great lyrics that are just honest and, um, and, and clever, great harmonies. Um, the guys it's, um, but not too, too much. Like I'm a big sucker for like the constant boy girl harmonies. If you can't imagine, if you listen to Eisenhower field, they like, I love like boys and girls singing at the same time, you know? Um, <laughs> but they don't, they don't overuse that. I think there's only one track, a really great, the, the last song on the, on the first album called less than now, where they're both kind of singing at the same time for the whole time. And it's, it's beautiful and it's great. And it's wonderful. And probably because they don't do it all the time on all the other songs, but they do provide a lot of, uh, the, the guys in the band provide a lot of the backing vocals and they do a lot of harmony interplay and a lot of, a lot of breakdowns with multiple vocals go saying different things at different, you know, like little rounds and stuff. And it's, it's yeah. great. And, well, and Liz does mo most of the singing, but all there's, there's four people in the band and they all sing. And so, uh, Jonathan, who is, uh, Liz plays guitar as well. Um, and sings and Jonathan plays guitar and he does a lot of the backup vocals, but then, um, Ben and Tristan, the other two guys in the band are also, they also, uh, throw in vocals here and there. So it's, it's really a lot. I just love that. It, it just makes the music so much more dense and, and, and interesting when you have those different vocals going on. And I'm, I'm just, I'm amazed at how it just seems so easy for them to create just really <laughs> catchy hooky stuff, but the music doesn't sound simple. Like there's actually a lot going on with the music, but it doesn't seem like it because just it's so catchy and you think well if something that's this catchy then it's just got to be like super simple what's going on behind it and it's not and apparently in doing some of my research they were all like they all met because they were doing studying jazz or something yeah. like you know music jazz music um to play um, but none of that really comes out uh in the in the music except for maybe that it's probably a, a little more comp stuff. There's a little more complicated stuff going on than what it seems um, because it's so accessible and, and catchy, but I think there's some kind of uh, subtle, subtle stuff going on there. That's way, way more complicated than what it looks. They're clearly accomplished musicians and it's, yeah. it shows. And when you watch their live stuff too, they're, I mean, it's just as good as, as the, the recorded stuff. And they have a lot of really cool videos too. Um, the unhappy un unhappy is kind of a weird little nugget that sh she's all the people in the video are walking around with like masks, except for it's like a pineapple mask. on her head. And it's really bizarre, but really good. And that one actually has lyrics. It's a lyric video, um, and which is fun. They all seem very to like, just, just in seeing the videos and seeing interviews and listening to interviews, they're just very, so unpretentious. They're just yeah. like, a bunch of dorks like they're just <laughs> they're just regular dorky people like us like they you know but they're just making fantastic music i, th I think it sounds like the clueless soundtrack knocked up the empire Records soundtrack <laughs> <laughs> see that too yeah i mean that's not that's definitely not a knock but i mean i could definitely see that it's pretty accurate like the whole the whole like pop sensibility and they're just very very tight at what they yeah. do 
but yeah, I, I, I thought it was enjoyable. Very, very catchy melodies, and I think that the instruments complement each other nicely. Yeah, but they, they and and they, I think they do a really good job of like the accenting backing vocals, like throughout the, like throughout like all the songs that I've that I've listened to by them. The the first album, it kind of rips out right out of the gate and kind of doesn't let up. Like I think all the songs are like really. There's a couple mid tempo songs, but for the most part, it just it just rears and goes the whole time. Um, but the second album is kind of up and down. Like they've got some of their their songs that are fast paced and 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 clip along, but they've got a lot of mid tempo. And then they have the first one that I've heard, like where it's just all acoustic. Like it's just um, called Beam of uh, You Are a Beam of Light, I think, which is a just beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, and at first that second album, I was a little like, oh, they're doing the second album thing where they slow down, you know, just like a lot of bands kind of do <laughs> who yeah. sometimes have that real fast paced first album. And then they're like, let me slow down the second one. Um, so initially I was kind of like, well, okay. But the more I listened to it, um, I, I liked everything that, that they were doing with that. And I'm, I'm glad that they did. It'll be very interesting to see what comes out of the third album from this. And and most most importantly, it has octave chords. Yeah, <laughs> octave chords. <laughs> but does it have C sharp minor? It probably does. Probably, sure. The most important of the minors. <laughs> <laughs> Do you miss getting new content from Five Year Mission? You should head over to patreon.com slash five year mission and check out our Patreon page. As a patron of the band, you will receive access to rare and behind the scenes pictures and videos and other cool stuff. You will also have early access to many things like video releases or new songs. You can sign up for different levels from Ensign all the way up to Admiral. One of the perks of being an Admiral on Five Year Mission's Patreon is that you get to be a producer on this podcast. Currently, our producers are Neil Carpenter, Helen Lake, Debbie Rinke, Carol Jones, Becky and Roxy, Steve and Frankie Palopoli, Madison Rachel Jones, and Jim Morehouse. Your name could be on this list if you sign up as an admiral. So head over to patreon.com slash five-year mission now. That's the number five-year mission. Twin powers activate. Form of a fan sets ad. That's right, fansets.com is your home for all things pop culture pin related. Coming this month, May 1st, Wonder Twins. Yeah, I thought that lead up kind of gave that one away, but there is a pin of the Wonder Twins new from DC, as well as Hot Girl and Harley Quinn. And in the Star Trek realm, we got Laris and Jaban from Star Trek Picard as a set. And we also have Esri Dax and the entire set of the brand new pin emojis. That's right, they're the cute little cartoon head versions of all your favorite Star Trek characters. So head on over to fansets.com, fill up your card, enter the code five year mission. That is the number five and then all caps year mission five-year mission get 10 percent off of your entire order at fansets.com fansets our pins have character and we thank them for sponsoring our show each and every single episode along with every episode of every podcast on the trek geeks podcast network This is the great thing about doing episodes like this because, you know, we're musicians. We, we, we want to talk about music. And then normally, you know, we try to keep this as a Star Trek thing. But we're, we're also music nerds. We're not just Star Trek nerds. So, I mean, we discover new bands we want to share. Uh, you know, we're going to we're going to we want to let you know about them. Maybe, you know, they'll they'll gain some new fans. Maybe you'll see kind of where our influences come from and things like that. And um you know, that's, that's why we want yeah, to do And chances episode. are, if you like one of our songs, you are probably going to like one of the bands that we chose because, you know, we, we are oftentimes attracted to the bands that or you know, our, our, our music comes out of the bands that we like. That's literally what influence means, Noah. <laughs> is, is, it like, is, is it really? <laughs> Thank you.
Well, speaking of check checking things, I'm checking the clock, and this is the longest episode we have ever done. It's magnificent. Th- this is this is our dragon force of our of our um, <laughs> podcast. podcast <episode>. <laughs> this <laughs> is the dragon force episode. <laughs> So 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 real quick, I know Noah and I were kind of, we're kind of discussing this with each other when I when I hipped him to one band. Do you guys have at least one more that you could just kind of shout out real quick? We don't have to go into great detail about them. Like one more that you just want to be like, hey, go look, go listen to Charlie these Bliss. Charlie Bliss, great female okay. fronted band. They sound like the Breeders, except the singers on Helium. I, I, I actually recently oh, okay. uh, ran across them as well, Charlie Bliss, and I, I'll. I can get behind that one. Well, I personally uh, want to shout out a band called The Screamers. I uh, recently discovered them on a podcast that I was I was telling Noah about, a podcast called No Dogs in Space. Uh, but The Screamers were a band back in like 1975, 1976. And there, it's just two synthesizers, a singer and a drummer. And uh, they never released any music until just like a couple months ago. And they finally released their like 1976, 77 demos on vinyl only. And they're fantastic and weird. It, like one time Iggy Pop hired them to play a private party for six people at his house. <laughs> so it's pretty funny. And the, 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 the Dead Kennedys... Their, one of their first shows was opening up for the Screamers out in L.A. Yeah, and, you, oh. and I started listening to that podcast and watching all the videos on YouTube of them. And it's it's a fascinating story and just just great, just great, weird, awesome music. I ran across a band just recently um, within the last couple of days called Potty Mouth, which it's a I've heard of them. Uh, mm-hmm. all female, three, three females in the band, all female band and uh I'm digging them. I really like them. That's that's another one for you, Noah. Another girl band. It doesn't start with B. Forget it. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. Well, new, new to me was over over the pandemic um, was the the Bright Eyes album called um, it's uh, with a B. I'm I'm wide awake. It's morning. I think is what it's called. The B. That's uh, a great album. Yeah. It is, and and I um, my cousin um, passed away during the pandemic, um, and I was I had to. F- get music for his funeral and he used to live with me here at my house um and he used to play that album all the time and so i knew the album and and i loved it when he played it but i never like when he moved out he took the album with him and i never got it so i hadn't listened to it in 15 years or or, or however long it was and um and when I had to pick some mu- music for his funeral, I thought, hey, his mom's not going to like any of his music. Let me, <laughs> what <laughs> can I possibly pick here? And I remembered that. So I, I downloaded the album and started listening to it again and, and fell in love with it again. And it's just, it's such a, such a great album. So if, uh, I would check that out uh, nice. if, if you like uh, kind of acoustic y, warbly voiced uh, dudes. So make sure to make sure to check out that Spotify playlist and uh, listen along. Maybe you'll discover something new. Maybe you'll maybe you'll look at look at us a little bit differently and go, ew. So <laughs> it's up to you. It's it's all about personal taste. So check that out. Uh, check out upcoming episodes of the podcast. We got some more stuff lined up in the near future. Until then. Thanks for tuning into the Trek Geeks Podcast Network. Make sure to listen to all the other shows on the network as well. Give them some support. Make sure to check out our Patreon. And uh, we will start practicing as a full band here again soon. And we will be back in your lives musically and not just over the podcast forum. Bye-bye. See you guys. Bye. Bye. You guys don't want to hang out? Thank you for listening to this episode of Fiverr Mission Podcast. If any of you are interested in listening to more of our music, you can check us out on YouTube or Spotify or iTunes or pretty much anywhere that you can listen to music. Just search for Five Year Mission and we should be the first thing that comes up. If you would like to contact us in regards to the podcast or anything else that you want to talk to us about, you can email us at fiveyearmissionband at gmail.com. And for more information about the band, you can go to fiveyearmission.net and also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Five Year Mission, the podcast is a production of Coconut Media Works.
Networks. Executive producers Bill Smith and Dan Davidson. For more great Star Trek discussion, discover the other shows of the Trek Geeks Podcast Network at trekgeeks.com or find us in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app.